In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, we are only a short time, a few days, away from this beautiful feast of the Ascension. We know our Lord ascended into heaven 40 days after his glorious resurrection. But we should often ask the question, with all of these things of our holy faith, the question is why? Why did our, no, our Lord not stay on this earth? Sort of, let's say, from the human way of thinking, it makes a lot more sense to be down here working miracles. People could go visit him. Or, I mean, he's God. He can visit all of us at any place. In fact, he doesn't even need the Holy Catholic Church. He could just run things directly. Makes sense. It was not the plan of God. It is not the infinite wisdom of God. And therefore, of course, our Lord's decision from all eternity to ascend into heaven is the best decision, is the wisest, is the perfect thing. We can still ask why. Why is it fitting that he did so? Well, firstly, we know that it was a reward. It was the necessary reward for his passion, death, and of course his resurrection. It was the, uh, the returning to his father in heaven, to his true home. It was the, the glorious reward for his life and death. Yes, we know that. But it is also another lesson to us. It is also our Lord wanted to ascend into heaven, to not stay here on this earth, to make it very clear, to make it crystal clear that this earth, our, say our, our lives on this earth, are not a true and lasting thing. That it is not for this earth that we are created. That this is not our final home. That we are simply travelers, wanderers, pilgrims, however you want to, to call it. We are on a journey to our true home. And that journey takes years. For some people, 20 years. For some people, 50. Some people, 80, 100. Who knows? God knows. But this life and the Catholic uh, truth of it, that what our Lord has given to us is you are only on this earth for a time. And that will end. So do not think of this earth as our true home. This is what, one of the reasons why we can understand our Lord ascending up into heaven. So we might ask this question. What do we need to do? How do we need to think? How do we need to act if that's a true statement? Uh, we know it is true that we are simply on this earth for a time. And we need to follow our Lord's example to seek out our true home. Well, what do we need to do? What do we need to think about? What do we need to comprehend to make this journey successfully? Firstly, we can say, because it is a journey, because it is a, we are wanderers on this earth, we don't have a true home. Well, you have all of the normal problems of any journey. You think of any journey you're on, firstly, if it's a long journey, well, it's sort of difficult. You don't have your familiar bedroom, your familiar home, your familiar food. You don't, can't rest whenever you need to. If you're on a journey, there are certain inconveniences. In fact, there are certain difficulties. There are obstacles. There are cancellations. There are problems. There is sickness. There are all sorts of hardships if you're on a real journey. It's the same holds true for our journey into eternity, our journey on this earth. We are travelers. And if we remember that reality, it brings all of these earthly trials and tribulations. It makes sense now. If you do not understand this earth as a temporary place that we are traveling through, then nothing makes sense. 
because we cannot find perfect justice. We cannot find a lasting happiness. All the joys and the pleasure of this earth, they come and they go so quickly that uh, they're always in our grasp and then immediately out of our grasp. Nothing is certain, nothing is secure, nothing is permanent in our control. If this is the, if this earth is our, our really our lasting and true home, it's a terrible home. It's dysfunctional. It's not fair. It's not just. So, well, we could go on forever about that issue. But l let us take that as the truth. The truth is, this earth is not our home. We are travelers. We are wanderers on this earth. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to be aware that there are certain dangers, let's say, certain things on a journey that we need to be ready for. Firstly, we could say one of the difficulties on this journey is our natural weaknesses. That is to say, because of original sin, our human nature, our nature has been damaged. You've heard this so many times. We don't, when, unfortunately, we, we say this very often because we forget our intellect, our mind can be darkened, it can, it can easily be mistaken, it can make the wrong judgments, it cannot see the truth always so clearly, it can make mistakes quite easily. Our will, our free will, should, is built by God, is created by God to seek good. Unfortunately, because of the damage of original sin, it more easily inclines towards uh, sinful things or things that are less good or not good at all. That's to say, it seeks out sin more easily than it seeks out virtue. Sin and, and bad actions and bad habits are, are require very little efforts. They come, uh, I say, naturally because of our damaged human nature of original sin. Virtue, on the other hand, to, to practice real virtue, to practice it day in and day out for weeks and months and years, to develop good and lasting habits. If you, if you know, you know. It requires exertion. It requires self-denial. It requires humility. It requires things that are not so easy to do. We have to suppress our vanity. We have to be ready to forgive others who have injured us. We have to be okay with sickness and suffering and pains, to be patient with these things. We have to hold back and control our anger when we feel justice has been broken, when something unjust happens to us or to someone close to us. We are immediately ready to rise into anger. If we think this earth is the only home, then that makes sense. Of course, it makes sense, but it doesn't work. You can't find that perfect justice here below. But if we understand that we are wanderers, we are travelers, then these everyday occurrences or every week occurrences where an injustice happens or something p bad happens, we say, oh, okay, well, that's just the nature of the world we live in. I should try to fix it to the best of my ability, but I do not need to lose control of my passions because of it. So this is one of the dangers on this journey is our own weakened human nature. Secondly, we can say the spirit of the world, as St. As John says in his epistle, all that is in the world, concupiscence of the flesh, concupiscence of the eyes, and the pride of life. He says, be very careful of these things. Not the world as God created it, but let's say the spirit of the world, the fallen nature of mankind. The world presents to us concupiscence and pride. Sometimes, uh, very often, you can simply look into the world and we see bad things happening. Oftentimes, certain days, everywhere you turn, there's some scandal, there is some bad example or some betrayal, or something just bad to look at. In the spirit of the world, people who are, let's say, acting badly, people with pr publicly presenting their vices or their sins, they are rewarded. People who the world, the spirit of the world, holds up 
as heroes, as examples, people who have all sorts of very well-known uh, sinful lives. They commit all these sins that the whole world knows of. They live in sin and the world says, look, aren't they beautiful? Look at how rich and beautiful and successful and talented they are. Look at them. They're amazing. That's the spirit of the world. Because in fact, they're not amazing. They have some God-given natural talent, sure. But their soul is not amazing. Their soul is, the, the, insofar as in the sight of God, they are not amazing. It is amazing that they are, continue to exist. It is the spirit of the world which promotes these bad things and ridicules and mocks virtue and faith. Something very, it's one of the dangers we have to, one of the, let's say, hardships on this journey is we have to persevere with courage, pushing through this, this uh, let's say, this atmosphere which is against our Lord Jesus Christ. Persecutes the good, rewards the evil. That is the spirit of the world that we have to power through. We have to push through. We do not let it affect us. We, obviously, we try to correct it whenever possible. But because this world is not our true home, we will never succeed in perfection, uh, fixing this, this spirit of the world. So that's another danger, something that we have to be afraid of, afraid of, uh, concerned with. And finally, there is the, uh, the devil himself and all of his fallen angels. St. Peter tells us, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It's a, a real thing that we need to be concerned about. When you're on a journey, you're, you're wandering around on this journey, you do need to be aware of wild animals. You need to be protected from wild animals or, or have within yourself the protection you need. The devil goes around as we are on this journey, suggests to us bad thoughts. He tries to excite our passions. He tries to direct our eyes to bad things. He pushes us towards despair or bitterness or cowardice. He wants to make this journey impossible. He says, you will never make it to your final home. You might as well give up now. Make this your home. At least when you make the earth your home, you get instant rewards. The devil lies to us. He is a, a liar from the beginning. He is the father of lies. And he is a murderer, a murderer of souls, of course. This is why our Lord tells us the devil is dangerous. He says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent bear it away. We need to make violent efforts at times to reject the spirit of the world or the temptations of the devil, or even violence against, in a sense, violence against our fallen human nature. So we have these three things, the world, the flesh, and the devil, that are on this journey, they can slow us down. They can derail us. They can pull us off of the, 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 the good road to heaven. Something to keep very clear in our minds on this journey. Sounds all very discouraging. Sounds too hard. Well, it is true that a traveler, someone who is on a journey, they all, if it's a long journey, they want to look for a place to to break up their journey, to have waypoints, to have stopping areas for their journey to rest and recover, to get good food, to wash their clothes, to wash their body, to let their body recover if it becomes sick. We all need on these journeys places to recover. You cannot make this journey from your birth to your death without some sort of help. And our Lord Jesus Christ says to us, Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. I will give you a house, a place that you can come and be restored. In fact, this is the very meaning. If you look in the Greek, the meaning of the Greek word, perish. It means a place where travelers come together a meeting place for travelers. It's a place where you're on this journey and these travelers come together to rest and recover and to be strengthened for the next stage of their journey. Our Lord gives us 
the Holy Catholic Church and says, this is a place that I give you. If you fall sick on your journey, you get some sort of disease, some sort of injury, he says, come, I give you the confession, all your sins, that venial damage or mortal damage upon your soul can be fixed, can be restored and healed. If you're on this journey, as normally when you're on a, a long journey, you're walking across the country, you can't do it without nourishment and, and liquids and nourishment. Our Lord says, I will not only give you that, I will give you my very body and blood to nourish your soul that you might have the strength to continue on this journey. And even then, if you do not, cannot find easily at any moment, sometimes these sacraments are not always available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Therefore, I give you an emergency phone box. I give you, as you see on the road, sometimes these SOS phones. Any moment of any time of the day, you can use prayer. Any time of the day or night. And amen, amen, I say to you, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Anything that is necessary for your soul, he will give it to you if you ask. If you pray properly, you pray with attention, devotion, you pray with humility, you will receive anything we need for this journey. Of course, the, the trick in that phrase, let's say the loophole is, is what you need, not what you want. Not, they're not always the same thing. And God, of course, knows what we need better than we do. So my dear faithful, our Lord says to us, anything that you need as a resting point, as something to help you carry on each day in and day out on this journey, I will bring you everything you need. It's a great consolation. It sort of over, overturns all of the worry from the previous three points of, well, you got to watch out. The world, the flesh, and the devil are there, and they can be tricky, and they can, they can derail you. They can pull you off course. They can put you on the, br the broad and the comfortable road, which only leads to hell. And you're trying to stay on that narrow, mountainous uh, walking path that's very difficult, and there are rocks and avalanches and thorns and every sort of thing you can imagine on that narrow road. It's not so easy. But our Lord says, don't worry. On that narrow road that leads to your final home, I will provide you with everything you can use and need. And my dear faithful, finally, after a long, many long years, Many a weary traveler, after countless labors and so many difficulties, they finally come in view of their final home. This is why the Catholic looks towards death and speaks of it and thinks of it and actually is looking forward as something wonderful, as a glorious thing. I'm finally going to get to that final door, the final day of this long journey of thousands and thousands of days. I come to that last day. How wonderful. I want to prepare for that day so that when I get to that day, it will be a most happy day. The happiness that I cannot describe saying, just through that door, through that final day of my life on this earth, my family, as to say, all the saints, all the angels, the Blessed Mother, the Most Holy Trinity, await me in my final and true home, a home that they have been preparing from all eternity, full of happiness, all possible joys that I could ever desire with no more sickness, no more death, no more hardship. And they welcome me with tears of joy. They're so happy to have me home at last. We cannot even fully comprehend this sort of reception, this sort of welcoming. Because anytime you travel, let's say you're away for 10 years, and you finally come home to your family members, they'll be filled with joy. 
They would embrace you. They'd be smiling. They'd be laughing. They'd be crying. But one month later, it'd be like, okay, well, when are you going back on your journey again? Because we get, on this earth, we are weak creatures. Our emotions don't always follow what they should. But that is no longer the case in heaven. We, we can't even comprehend that you would be so excited every single day, overflowing these tidal waves of joy coming to our, through our, our, our person, our soul and our body, just filled with this joy that cannot be contained. Every single day for eternity. There is never a down moment. There is never a, a bad mood. There is never any sort of sickness, any sort of betrayal. There's never any worry, anxiety. These are all gone. We, 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 it's, it's even hard for us to imagine such a life. And yet it is the most logical thing to think about. What, are our, what, what would we do to get to this true home? Well, St. Paul tells us, he says, I have fought the f a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. And as to the rest, there is laid for me a crown of justice, which the Lord, the just judge, will give to me on that day. St. Paul could see at least a glimpse of what awaits us if we follow our Lord Jesus Christ. What a great reminder to us all when we come close now in these next few days, the ascension of our Lord. Let us turn to our Lord. Let's turn to the Blessed Mother to help us on this journey as we are wanderers, we are pilgrims. We do not look for contentment and perfection in our lives here below. We seek our Lord. And everything that brings us towards that, that final day, that will bring us into eternal life. Everything we can do is on this journey is a good thing. Let us remember this important truth that we are wanderers on this earth. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.